Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Rahul from Dabble Lab and in this video I am going to show you how to create a Google action from scratch. To do this we will be using Dialogflow to create the conversational model, AWS Lambda to host our backend code and like always the programming language that we will be using is Python 3.8. So let's get started. To create the conversational model go to dialogflow.cloud.google.com and sign in using your Gmail account. Once you have done that, you will see a page like this, which is the default screen for Dialogflow. Now what we are going to do here is to create a new agent, which will serve as the conversational model for our Google action. So I'll just click on the create agent button right here and give that agent a name. So you can give it any name you want. I am just going to name it demo agent and uh, the default language the time and everything i'll just set it you know keep it, uh, everything as it is uh, in the google project section make sure that uh, it is selected as create a new google project so it will automatically create the google project that uh, dialogflow requires and we'll click on create So this can take a minute or two. So what we are uh, essentially trying to do here is we are creating an agent and the agent would contain intents, entities and all of the other things that are required to build the conversational model. Now unlike the Alexa skill kit, uh, the dialogue flow conversational model supports a lot of things. Like for example, if you are building a simple bot, you don't actually need to you know, have a backend. You can create a request and response cycle right here in Dialogflow. So I'll start with that and show you how that is done. So if you click on intents, you will see this page and over here you see that a default welcome intent is created. You know, uh, th this comes uh, built in. So just click on it and uh, over here you will see a lot of things. So the first thing we see is context and events. Let's leave them aside for now and go down. So we see the training phrases, right? These training phrases are utterances, which, you know, are clubbed together to form a single intent, which in this case is the welcome intent. So whenever a user says any of these things, it is treated as the welcome intent. So these are the things the user can say. If you scroll down, you will see a section called responses. This contains the responses that the user would get if they call this intent. So let's try it out and see how this performs. So on the right hand side, you can see the simulator. I will simply type hi over there. And as you see, uh, we can see a response. It says, hi, how are you doing? And that response is coming from here. And this is randomized. So you can, uh, you know, feed in a lot of responses and it will automatically randomize these things. But what we will be doing is not, you know, just building simple static responses. We'll be doing some calculations and other stuff. And, you know, uh, as uh, the Google action becomes complex, you'll need to do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, logical stuff in your code. So for those reasons, we need to have a backend code. Uh, through which we can control that behavior and send uh, the response that we need. Now, ideally, you would use a inline editor, which is available right here in the fulfillment section. So if you click on fulfillment, you will see that there is something called as the inline editor right here. But since I'm using Python, and I suppose this does not su uh, support Python as of now, so I'm not using this inline editor but rather I am more comfortable with AWS Lambda. So I'll be using that as the backend. Okay, so let's move on and uh, let's see what else we can do over here. So uh, as I said before, we won't be uh, using the default responses from here. So I'll just delete them for now. And the last section over here you see is fulfillment. So I'll come back to this once we have actually made our backend code and you know, connected these two. So the first step you can say over here is done. I've just deleted those responses and, you know, clicked on save. So let's now move to uh, the second step, which is creating the backend code. The backend code 
it will be hosted on AWS Lambda as I've said before. So uh, to you know create that function, what we'll do is we'll go to console.aws.amazon.com and I'll leave all these links in the description below. So just go there and log in using your Amazon account. And once you have done that, you will reach this kind of a page. On the top over here, just search for Lambda and uh, you will see that this is the service that we are looking for. Just click on this service and now we will see an option to create a new Lambda function. Right here you see this orange button, just click on this and now we will give our function a name. I so will just call it Google Action demo function right uh, now the programming language as I said before we'll be using Python so I've selected Python 3.8 which is the latest version for Python and the default execution role I'll just leave it to create a new role with basic lambda permissions uh, all it will contain is just some basic uh, you know permissions for lambda which allows it to log the uh, you know uh, uh, logs to CloudWatch and a few other things but that's just basic execution and no special permissions have been given till now so I'll just create this function so once this function gets created what would happen is uh, our backend function is there and we also have a front-end uh, conversational agent what we need to do is connect these two so if I just scroll down over here you will see this file called lambda function.py and if you click on it this is a basic function which handles the request you know incoming request and sends a response so we'll come back to this code later but before this what we need to do is we need to add a trigger for api gateway so just click on add trigger and you will see from the drop down menu you will see this first option as api gateway just click on this and from the section down below click create an API you will see two options HTTP and REST API you can select any one of them I choose REST API and from the security just select open for now and click on add so once you do that what happens is uh, an API gateway layer is created and this acts as a middle layer which we can use to connect our uh, AWS code to our Dialogflow agent so just click on API gateway, click on details and you see this API endpoint right here. So this is the URL that we are looking for. So just copy this URL and go back to Dialogflow. Uh, when we reach Dialogflow again, you will see a fulfillment tab on the left hand side. Just click on it and uh, you see this webhook option. This is the option that we'll be using to connect these. So just enable it and in the URL section just paste the URL that we just copied and once you've done that scroll down and click on save. So now our uh, Dialogflow agent is connected to our AWS Lambda code but uh, there are still a few things that we need to do. So uh, let's see what, what is left. So once again I go back to the intent and now I want to try this intent out to see what you know uh, what's exactly happening here and what response am I getting. So if I say hi you can see I get no response because I've deleted all the responses default responses that were right here. But if you click on the diagnostic info at the bottom over here so you will see that a raw API response this response was sent and you don't see any uh, response that we've received so let's just try this again actually ideally we should see a response here but it's okay if you're not seeing it i'll just check the fulfillment okay i think the reason we are not able to see uh, see that is because in every intent that you create you need to specify whether you want it to be uh, you know this this intent to be fulfilled by a webhook or not so uh, go down to the fulfillment section and enable webhook call for this intent and then click on save once you do that any request that comes to this intent will then be forwarded to the webhook call to get an appropriate response 
so now let's type in hi i typed in hi and i'll click on diagnostic info click on so this if i click on fulfillment request this is the request that our dialog flow service sent to our webhook so you can see all of this information right here uh, and apart from this this is the fulfillment response so this is the response that our webhook gave back to our dialog flow service so you can see it's a simple string which says hello from lambda and the fulfillment status so in this case though we get a response we still get a webhook called failed status and it says fail to parse webhook json response and the reason for that is that uh, whenever you're using dialog flow and building google actions or a basic chatbot there is a particular format that you know you need to use in order to uh, make these things work so if you only pass a certain json format you know as a response from your webhook service only then will dialog flow recognize it parse it in the right way and then deliver the response to the user so now let's uh, go to our code and see how our code looks like so this is the aws lambda code section i'll click on the code i'll go back and this is the lambda function so as you can see here what this lambda function contains is a basic function called lambda handler and it receives an event and context from uh, our dialog flow service and actually we don't need the context over here we only need the event for now and inside the event it would contain a response body so event would be the entire uh, you know uh, request that we get from uh, the, the dialog flow service and inside of that there will be the http calls and all of that information uh, in the headers and in the body part you will get uh, the the request that we saw in the diagnostic info right here right this request that we saw we will see that in the body part so what we need to do is we need to uh, you know get that request then figure out all the details which are inside of there and send back a response i won't be doing that in this video uh, we can uh, you know leave that for a later video but for now i will show you how to send the correct kind of response from the lambda function back to the dialog flow service for that i will need uh, the right kind of response so how do i know what's the right response I have a few bookmarks over here which contain the documentation. So if you click on this documentation again the link for this documentation will be down in the description below. So just go to this and you will see uh, different kinds of responses that you can you know send back to uh, Dialogflow. So if you scroll down on this page you will see the Google Assistant response. So I will simply copy this take it back to my Lambda function and inside the body you see this body json.dumps i will just replace this entire thing with our uh, you know with the json that we just copied and just format it so that it looks good and yes i think with that uh, one more thing we need to change so this is set to true so again we'll be setting it to true only but we'll change it from you know small letters to the first t being capital and this is because right now this is acting as a dictionary for python so uh, you know in python we use the capitalized t when we uh, define true and later on using this json dot dumps this entire thing will actually be converted to json so it will automatically be converted to the right format but uh, since our code is in uh, you know using python so we need to follow the python dictionary format to define these things so just this one simple change and then you can also change this message which is right here and i will say hello from lambda all right now we have our message and our uh, you know response set up so i'll just click on deploy once this is deployed i'll go back to dialog flow and i'll click hi over here and ideally i am guessing this should not work oh this actually worked but never mind 
so it says webhook uh, fulfillment successful and we get the right kind of response we still don't see any response over here and there's a reason for that that is that it only shows the response which is configured for dialog flow right now the response that we have given is configured for the google assistant so to test out that response go to the integrations tab on the left hand side and from there just click on this integration button continue with integration you will see uh, this section just click on leave this as it is and click on test button on the bottom so this will take uh, a few minutes and uh, once this you know thing is set up it will show you a test simulator so over here you can test all of your uh, you know intents and see the exact response you know visually as well as you can listen to the audio that is coming back from uh, the dialog flow service or actually coming back from the the lambda that we have just defined so let's just let it complete and uh, once that is done okay so i guess now it is complete so we have hit a roadblock here if you also see this permission denied for your request message like i do then the reason for this is very simple actually and that is that you are logged in from uh, more than one gmail account and this is causing a mismatch so i am logged in using my personal account as well as my work account so what i would do is at the top in the url i can just change uh, that 0 to 1 or either uh, i can change the account from the right hand side as i just showed you so for simplicity i would just change it from 0 to 1 in the uh, in the url itself because i know that works and once you do that you will reach uh, you will reach this page and this is the page for the test simulator so as you can see right here it says talk to my test app on the right, left hand side and on the right hand side it contains some options so i'll just run my test app and uh, see how it works so you see it gives us an error message and says we are sorry but something went wrong and the reason for that is that we have not yet defined an invocation name for our google action so just go to this overview tab on the top section and click on decide your action is invoked give your action any name i would name it demo action and click on save ideally after doing this we you know it should work so i'll go back to the test section and from there i'll just click on talk to demo action and i should uh, you know receive a response all right here's the test version of demo action hello from lambda so i hope you were able to hear that response and you can also see it right in front of your eyes on the screen that uh, you know this is just a default message so whenever your skill is in testing so you know it's not published yet so it will say here's the test version of your whatever the name of your you know action is and then it would give you uh, the welcome message so this was the welcome message in our case this is a simple demo uh, using which you know i've demonstrated how you can uh, build a dialog flow agent build a backend code connect the two and make it all work in the future videos we'll have a look at how we can expand this by adding more intents adding uh, you know entities to it uh, how to define logic you know make that program look better make it handle multiple kind of you know make it send multiple kind of responses and do all of that but uh, that is for a separate video and i'll uh, let it uh, you know let this video end here for now if you like this video for any reason don't forget to hit the like button and uh, if you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber yet then please make sure to subscribe because it costs nothing but really helps us and keeps us motivated with that said i will take your leave for now and see you in the next video goodbye